إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله Indeed the most truthful of speech is the book of Allah وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this religion of ours وكل محدثة بدعة and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation وكل بدعة ضلالة and every innovation is misguidance and it leads astray. Every going astray and every misguidance is in the hellfire. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, my beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, I greet you with the greeting of Islam, the greeting of the Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We enter nowadays into the month of Sha'ban, the month that precedes Ramadan, and we ask Allah, Allahumma ballaghna Ramadan, may Allah allow us to hurry up and reach the month of Ramadan. But what a time we have reached the world over, especially now in the land we live where this plague, this disease, this coronavirus has put us in a state of shock, in a state of curiosity, in a state of anxiety. This is nothing more than a wake-up call from our Creator, the one who, after creating the heavens and the earth in six days, ascended above His throne in a manner which suits His Majesty. The one who is perfect in every way whatsoever. This is his way of calling us back to him. And while we are allowed to seek medical help and to be cautious, and as we mentioned in the last khutbah we gave in the masjid, to tie the camel and trust in Allah, meaning to take the precautions you would take and to still put your trust in your Lord. While we're allowed to do that, seeing this disease, how it's ravaging the glands, taking people by storm, this should make us realize that we have taken the blessings that Allah has given us for granted. From the physical things and the concrete things to the things that we cannot touch, that are abstract. One of those things that disheartens us is our beloved masjid where we're missing to going to pray the daily prayers, the Jumu'ah prayer, the Friday prayers, being guests in the home of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is definitely a struggle for us at this time, a severe one. What will we do? How will we fight this battle? On what end will we, on what, on, on which end will we 
be. Like meaning how will we choose to live our lives as we go through this struggle. After many requests, I'm going to try and send out a lecture once a week. And I urge you to get your family together and to make time to listen to it. Especially because we don't have our Friday khutbah. And although we had this message a few months ago, the one that I'm going to speak about now, it's fitting for the time because we're only reaching the state that we're in. Where Allah had to deliver to the world this virus that's taking us by storm. We're only here because of abandoning the Qur'an and the sunnah of our Prophet Wasallam. We're only here because we have chosen sin and disobedience over good deeds and obedience. We have chosen darkness over light. So I wanted to remind myself and those listening that Allah said that whoever fears Him, He will give him or her a way out. And again, we may think we hear these things, but this is the time to reflect. Ramadan is coming. We don't know if we'll live to see it. And every day we're hearing and seeing things that we never thought we would hear or see in our lifetimes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ وَمَن يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهُوَ حَسْبُهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says in the Quran, what means, and whosoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to Him, He will make him, He will make for him or her a way out, a way to get out of every difficulty. And He will provide him or her from sources that they could never imagine. And whoever puts their trust in Allah, then Allah will suffice him or her. Fearing Allah, keeping our duty to Allah, will give us that way out of every difficulty. We need to put our trust in Allah, and Allah will be sufficient for us. Part of what made me choose this topic again is seeing and hearing, and I remind myself first, how these days where we cannot go to the masjid, where many are not at work, how people are spending their days. Making movie nights the priority over the book of Allah. Choosing to just hang out and shoot the breeze so late that you miss Fajr prayer. So these are the reasons why we're coming back to Fearing Allah, keeping our duty to Allah, Allah will make us a way for us a way out of every difficulty. So we need to ponder over the meaning of this ayah and reflect and understand, especially when we see from the Muslims in our days getting into haram things when test, when tested with struggle or when seeking this dunya's pleasures whether it be carelessly entering into riba, into interest, whether it's in a bank or it's to buy things that you want but you can't afford or whatever it may be, trying to justify it and then getting into haram to make money, selling and buying haram, whether it be drugs, alcohol, whether it be involving yourself in gambling, whether it be any of those such things. But let's look at an example of people who were elevated due to their taqwa. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu, he narrates that the Prophet وسلم, he said, أن رجلا من بني إسرائيل سأل بعض بني إسرائيل أن يسلفه ألف دينار. فدفعها إليه 
فخرج في فخرج في البحر فلم يجد مركبا فأخذ خشبة فنقرها فأدخل فيها ألف دينار فرمى بها في البحر فخرج الرجل الذي كان أسلفه فإذا بالخشبة فأخذها لأهله حطبا فذكر الحديث فلما نشرها وجد المال Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he narrated in this authentic hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari that a man from Bani Israel asked someone from Bani Israel to give him a loan of 1,000 dinar. And the man gave it to him. So the debtor, the one who took this loan, this, this debt, he went on a voyage he went on a journey. And when the time for repayment came, that he had to repay the debt in, he didn't find a boat. So many of us would at that point say, well, I don't have a way to pay it back, so oh well. But look at what he did. He took a piece of wood. He bored it open. He cut a hole in it. He put a thousand dinar. He put what he owed that other man, in this piece of wood, sealed it up and threw it back into the sea. The one who had loaned him that money, one day he went out and took a piece of wood to his family to be used as firewood. The Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned the narration and said, when he sawed the wood, he found his money in it. So again, this is a point for us to reflect. How many of us in this situation would have just accepted the fact that we weren't around or would have made every excuse to say, well, I don't have the money to pay you back. And sometimes we do this to family members, to brothers and sisters, to anybody taking advantage of their kindness, of their generosity, of their shyness. But look at what this man did. In another narration, he said, the former man said, an Israeli, uh, one from Bani Israel, he asked another from Bani Israel for that loan. And that second man required a witness. فَقَالَ أَعْتِنِي بِالشُّهَدَاءِ أشهدهم. قال كفى بالله شهيدا. He said, I want a, a, a witness to witness this loan. He said, Allah is sufficient as a witness. He said, I want a surety. He said, Allah is sufficient as a surety. So the man lent him that money. It was said in this other narration, that when he threw the piece of wood into the sea, he said, Allahumma innaka ta'lam anni kuntu tasallaftu fulanan alfa dinarin fasa'alani kafila faqult kafa billahi kafila faradiya bika wasa'alani shahida faqult kafa billahi shahida faradiya bik wa anni jahadtu أن أجد مركبا أبعث إليه الذي له فلم أقدر وإني أستودعكها. So in one narration, the man when he threw the piece of wood into the ocean, he said, "O oh Allah, you know that I took a loan of a thousand dinar from so and so. He demanded a surety from me, and I told him Allah's guarantee was sufficient." And he accepted you as the guarantee. He then asked me for a witness. I told him that Allah was sufficient as a witness. And he accepted you as a witness. No doubt I tried hard to find a conveyance so I could pay his money. But I could not find one. So I hand over this money to you. Saying that he threw the piece of wood into the sea until it went far away. And he went away. And meanwhile... He still continued to search 
for a boat or a way to get back to where the creditor was or to where the one who loaned him was. Subhanallah. Like, look at this taqwa. Look at this fear of Allah. Look at this consciousness of Allah. Look at this man who is so afraid of the punishment of Allah that he wants to distance himself from that punishment and the way to do that is to try and find any way he could pay that debt back. So, again, in this other narration that we're mentioning that had more detail to it, he came back and he said, By Allah, I had been trying hard to get a boat so I could bring you your money, but failed to get one before I have come by. The lender asked, Have you sent something to me? The one who had taken the debt replied, I've told you, I couldn't get a boat other than this one so that I could come to you. I'm sorry that I'm late to pay you back your debt. And the lender had told him at this time, Allah has delivered on your behalf the money you sent in the piece of wood. So you may keep your 1,000 dinar and depart guided on the right path. This hadith again was in Sahih al-Bukhari. And we learn so much from it. So much from it. There's no kafil, there's no guarantee or true witness over everything other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only a person with trust and reliance on Allah would do what this man did. And only one with integrity would inform the other one that he did receive his loan back even though he could have lied and had double the money. The one who sent the money, look how sincere he was. Look what he was doing because of fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He had no revelation or inspiration from Allah that his money would even get there. It could have been lost. It could have drowned in the water. But he was so afraid to dishonor Allah by dishonoring the one who gave him the loan that he just threw it in the ocean and put his trust in Allah. This was a miracle of Allah's for the one who kept his trust. The ocean was under the command and the servitude of Allah because this slave of Allah had taqwa. Many of us take advantage of others who borrow and do not repay, for example, because they don't want to, or until the last possible second, those who run away from their debts. We destroy ourselves by chasing wealth at the price of Allah, at the price of His Jannah, abandoning the Salah even at times just to make a few extra dollars. Just to make a few extra dollars. Jabir radiallahu anhu, he narrates in a hadith, also in Sahih al-Bukhari, he said, while we were offering the salah with the Prophet sallallahu a caravan carrying food came from Sham, from the area of Syria and the likes of it. The people looked towards the caravan and they went to it. And only 12 people remained with the Prophet sallallahu Again, he was speaking to them. They were with the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the best company you could have. But a caravan of food came and the people dispersed. So the wahi was revealed, the, the revelation, the divine revelation came down. وَإِذْ رَأُوا تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوَنًا فَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا قُلْ مَا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ خَيْرٌ مِّنَ اللَّهْوِ وَمِنَ التِّجَارَةِ Wallahu khayrul raziqeen. So the revelation came down and when they see some merchandise or some amusement, they disperse headlong into it. That which Allah has is better than any amusement or any merchandise. And Allah is the best of the providers. My brothers and sisters in Islam, we have to use the time that we're off now 
where we have abandoned the Qur'an to come back to the Qur'an, where we have gotten lazy with the prayers to come back to the prayers, where we've gotten lazy with the sunnah prayers to come back to the sunnah prayers, to increase in dhikr, remembrance of Allah, to increase in dua, supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to increase in istighfar, asking Allah for forgiveness. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in one narration, it says that the Prophet ﷺ used to seek the forgiveness of Allah in a day 100 times. If you look around us, what's happening today is nothing more than a consequence of our sins and disobedience and our forgetting Allah and our forgetting meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentions in the Qur'an, and this is يعني, in, in some rizq, you know, some provisions that we have, Allah sends our way for having taqwa of Him and keeping our obligations to Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, رِجَالٌ لَا تُلْهِيهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وإقام الصلاة وإيتاء الزكاة يخافون يوما تتقلب فيه القلوب والأبصار Allah says what means men, mankind whom neither trade nor sale no business diverts them from the remembrance of Allah with heart and tongue nor from performing the salah establishing the salah nor from giving the zakat. They fear a day when their hearts, when the hearts and the eyes will be overturned out of the horror of the torment of the day of resurrection. That Allah may reward them according to the best of their deeds and add even more for them out of His grace. And Allah provides without measure to whom He wills. Yet again, some turn to haram to quote-unquote secure themselves, buying life insurance to secure themselves. And that is haram, obviously. Buying disability insurance. We're not talking about what the state takes out of your check mandatorily and you have no option in it. But buying this extra stuff to secure themselves financially. So much fear of how they're going to live in this life. No thought of how they'll live in the next one. And we saw in that hadith from Samar ibn al-Jundab radiallahu anhu where the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said this night I dreamt that two men came and took me to a sacred land and we proceeded till we reached a river of blood and in the middle was a man. And on the edge of the river, on its bank, was another man standing with stones in his hands. The man in the middle of the river, he would try to get out, but the one on the edge of the river would throw a stone in his mouth, forcing him to stay in the river a river of blood. So whenever he tried to come out, the other man would throw the stone in his mouth and force him to go back to the former place. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَا هَذَا Who is this? And he was told, فَقَالَ الَّذِي رَأَيْتُهُ فِي النَّهْرِ أَكُلُ الرِّبَى The one who you found in the, in the river, was the one who consumed riba, who consumed usury and interest. Again, look at how much we just care about the comfort of this life, security of this life. And security is no longer being secure under the protection of Allah, trusting in His qadr, in His decree. It's become one where we see people only thinking security is in money. My brothers and sisters in Islam, let us look at this narration as even more proof that taqwa 
is what will get you the real help of Allah. And in this time and at all times, especially, we need the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhuma, may Allah be pleased with him and his father. He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, while three people were walking, the rain began to fall. And they had to enter a cave in a mountain. A big rock rolled over and blocked the mouth of the cave. قَالَ فَقَالَ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ أَدْعُ اللَّهَ بِأَفْضَلِ عَمَلٍ عَمِلْتُمُوهُ So, the three men walking, the rain falls, they go into a cave, a big rock now falls over it, blocking the opening of the cave. There's no way to sustenance, there's no way to food, to provision, to be with their loved ones. They're trapped. You can relate this to how we're trapped nowadays in our homes because of fear of this virus. And we have to take the precautions. This virus is from the soldiers of Allah. And it is on the earth. And it is taking the earth by storm. So consider us now in a cave and the rock is rolled over. So what did they say to each other, the ones who were stuck in the cave? They said, invoke Allah, make dua to Allah. Ikhwani, akhwati, fillah, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we have forgotten to make dua. We're always looking for the solution that's physical in front of us. We have forgotten to make dua, to invoke Allah. They said to each other, invoke Allah, call upon Allah with the best deed you have performed. So that Allah might remove the rock. So Allah might open the cave so we can get out. So one of them said, Oh Allah, my parents were old. And I used to go out for grazing my animals. On my return, I would milk the animals and take a milk in a vessel to my parents to drink. After they had drunk from it, again, after they had drunk from it, I would give it to my children, family, and wife. You know, sometimes when we look at what's happening in the world, and again, we always want to point to a bad leader, وَلَعَيَادُ billah or to some country to point the blame, or to some people to point the blame. We're constantly forgetting the importance of the parents. And day in and day out, you're seeing the parents become from the most disrespected people in society. This man is calling upon Allah, stuck in a cave. His life will end if he does not get out. And his good deed has to do with putting his parents above everybody and everything else. Birr al-walidain alayna dain. Being good to our parents is a debt we owe Allah and our parents and we'll never be able to repay it back. We will die in debt. Because we will never be able to pay our parents back for what they did for us. After they had drunk from it, again, his parents, he gave it to the children, wife, and the family. One day, I was delayed, he said. And on my return, I found my parents already asleep. I disliked to wake them up. So he could have poured some at this time and left it by their bed and then fed his wife and kids and, and, and everybody else, the rest of the family. He could have said, well, they already slept. They don't need this today. They'll be fine. They'll wake up in the morning and have their regular breakfast. He said, I dislike to wake them up. The children were crying at my feet because of hunger. 
Look at how many times we disrespect our parents because we put our children above them. This is not pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That state of affairs continued until the dawn. He stayed like that till the dawn, waiting by his parents' bed with the milk in his hand, not giving it to even his children who were crying out of hunger until he could feed his parents first. He said, Allahumma in kunta ta'alam anni fa'altu dhalika ibtigha'a wajhika fafruj anna furjatan nara minha as-sama. Qala fafurj anhum. So this man said, O oh Allah, if you regard that I did this for your sake, then please remove the rock from the opening of the cave so that we may see the sky. So if this truly was a good action, that this man favored his parents over everybody and everything else, even his own children who were hungry and starving. If this was beloved to Allah, then Allah was going to accept the dua, accept the supplication and move the rock. The hadith mentions then that the rock was moved. So we know that the rock was moved a bit so they could see the sky, but not enough for them to get out. So this was a good deed. My brothers and sisters in Islam, in these times, we must remember to make dua, make supplication. Let us love our parents. Do good to them. Help them out. Be patient with them. And it will be a source for Allah to ease our conditions. The second man in the cave said, Oh Allah, you know that I was in love with a cousin of mine. Like the deepest love a man could have for a woman. And she told me that I would not get my desire fulfilled. He wanted to commit zina with her unless I paid her a hundred dinar, a hundred gold pieces. So now he wants to sin so bad that the narration says he struggled for it until he gathered the desired amount. And here I remind myself and you how many times how many of times to fulfill a haram we beat our body up. We strove and strove and strove. We went to the limits. We spent money. We exerted ourselves. We stayed up all night. We hurt others along that path just to get to the point where we could have an easier path to commit this sin that we wanted to do. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. May Allah forgive us. He said, so I struggled till I got the desired amount. And when I sat ready to commit the zina, she told me, Attaqillah. She told me, be afraid of Allah. Fear your Lord. And do an action that will put a barrier between yourself and his punishment. Not one that will earn his punishment. And she asked me not to do this to her, except if it was done rightfully, yani by marriage. So this man, even though he was there, and we could have seen him like many evil men today, forcing themselves upon the woman whom they're not married to, and doing the likes of this evil, he got up, he took heed of this, he feared Allah. So he chose Allah over his desires. So he chose Allah as his Lord, not the desires as his Lord. So he said, I got up and left. So now the man says, one of the ones stuck in the cave, فَإِن كُنْتَ تَعْلَمْ أَنِّي فَعَلْتُ ذَلِكَ إِبْتِغَاءَ وَجْهِكَ فَفْرُجْ عَنَّا فُرْجَ قَالَ فَفَرَجَ عَنْهُمْ الثُلُثَيْنِ So the man said, O oh Allah, if you regard that I did this for your sake, that I wanted to fulfill my desire so bad, but I left it only for your sake because I feared you, 
then kindly remove this rock. So now two-thirds of the rock was removed. So this deed was accepted. He did a good deed and he called upon Allah to protect them, to help them. So the rock was moved a bit more, still not enough for them to get out. The third man in the cave, he has to come up with a good deed that was truly for the sake of Allah, truly for the sake of his Lord to please his face. He said, O oh Allah, no doubt, you know that once I employed a worker for one faraq, for three sa' of millet. This was the payment, was three sa' of millet. And when I wanted to pay him, he refused to take it. And he went away. So instead of saying, well, he didn't want to be paid, it's mine now, which is what the majority of people on the earth would do. He said, I sowed it. Meaning, I invested it. And from its yield, meaning he, he took that millet, he planted it from its yield, he bought cows and a shepherd. After a time, that man came back and he demanded his money. Again, now you're talking three saw, all right, of millet. This is not a large amount of, of, of grain, okay? That's what he would have had to be paid. Call it five bucks or $10 or $20. After a time, the man came and demanded his money. He said, I said to him, go. All those cows, that shepherd, that is all for you. He asked me, you know, are you joking with me? Seriously, why are you going to tell me that's all for me? You owe me just like three saw of, of millet, right? He said, you got to be joking with me. Come on, man. Just give me my, my uh, amount and let me go. Again, call it 20 bucks. Now he's saying a whole herd of cows and a shepherd with them. Now these are all for you. Call that $100,000. I told him that I was not joking with him and all that belonged to him. So he said, Allahumma in kunta ta'lamu anni fa'altu thalika abdaga wajhika fafruj anna fakushifa anhum. So he made the dua with this good deed, one that had no greed, no selfishness, had honor, had trustworthiness in it. To give a man his right, even if it meant something that could have been very valuable to you, but it was rightfully his because it's what you use to invest with it. He said, Oh Allah, if you regard that I did that sincerely for your sake, that I only was like this to be honest and trustworthy for your sake, then please remove the rest of the rock so we can get out and be saved. So the rock was moved completely from the mouth of the cave. You will find this hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. My brothers and sisters in Islam, look at the actions you do. Are they righteous? Are they good? Are they halal? Are they permissible? Are they for the sake of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala, glorified and exalted is He. Or are they purely and sincerely, uh, afwan, and are they purely and sincerely for Allah alone? Do we do these actions to show off? Do we do them so that somebody can say, oh, this person is so righteous, or this person is so pious, or this person is so generous? Or are we doing it purely for our Lord to love us? And reward us. If so, then call upon him and make dua with the good deeds you do. For a deed to be accepted, it has to have ikhlas, sincerity for the sake of Allah alone. You can't do it to show off. You have to do it for the sake of Allah alone. And secondly, it has to be in accordance 
with the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger Sallallahu You cannot come with a deed that is made up even if it's by a quote-unquote righteous person or a famous person or a person that is revered by others as a sheikh or a mufti or a maulana or whatever. And I mention this because I saw something so disheartening the other day. In a post where it was saying, hey, we're going to set this one time across the world where Muslims all at the same time are going to say this 100 times, this 100 times, and this 100 times. And there was no proof in the Quran and the Sunnah for that. It was the most disheartening thing I ever had to see. Because we're thinking we have to look for ways to earn Allah's love. We're thinking we have to look for ways that will get us out of the hardship we're in. And we're looking to our own made up things, our own made up words. Even though these words were, let's say, from the Quran or from the Hadith, where did you come up that we should say them all together? Where did you come up with that we should say them a hundred times? If it's not in a specific Hadith. The sad thing is there are hadiths that mention phrases to say a hundred times and the reward is beyond, beyond generous from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we've abandoned the sunnah of our Prophet wasallam and made up our own. And I've said it before and I say it in a way which kind of sounds harsh, but that is nothing more than a spit in the face of Allah and a spit in the face of His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Allah said, Al-Yawma akmaltu lakum dinukum. He told the Prophet ﷺ from the final revelations, This day I've perfected, completed my favor upon you. I've completed the religion for you. Wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati and completed my favor upon you. Wa raditu lakum al-Islam adina and have chosen for you al-Islam as your religion. Who are we to change anything or to think anything we can do could be better than that which Allah revealed or His Prophet ﷺ taught us or the companions or the tabi'een or the tab tabi'een did of authentic narrations. Look at the man in this reflection of the three in the cave with his parents and reflect upon it. And how you are towards your parents. Even if they're deceased, you can give charity in their in their name. To give them some reward. And this is one of the ongoing charities, even when the parents have passed. Look at the man and the one who he wanted to commit zina with. Struggling to fulfill his desire. That strong desire to commit that zina. But fearing Allah and not doing something without its right. And then the man who took the money, who probably could have used it, or at least, you know, the other man refused it at first and went away, and he, he could have used it for something else at the time, but he sold it and he invested it for him, and everything that came from that investment he gave to that man. Remember, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Whoever fears Allah, whoever keeps his or her duty to Allah, whoever is conscious of Allah, whoever acts in a way that they put a barrier between themselves and the punishment of Allah by obeying Him and His Messenger وسلم, Allah will give that person a way out of everything every hardship for in the mal usri yusra in the mal usri yusra indeed with every hardship there is relief indeed where there with every hardship there is relief many of us nowadays our iman is weak and i remind myself first no one is saved from this iman according to ahl sunnah wal jama'a faith is not just a statement of the tongue or a belief in the heart. Iman tasdiq al-qalb. It is a belief in the heart. And. 
and there's three components they all have to be there and the qawl bil lisan and the statement of the tongue wa amal jawarih or amal jawarih and the actions of the limbs iman goes up and down nowadays many of us our iman is weak it is weak let us remember the one man who was stuck and could not repay his debt. And he didn't say, oh, Allah will pay my debt for me. I'm stuck. I have no way to pay it back. He moved. He did some action. He tried. He struggled. He took the best means possible in the situation and he relied upon Allah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, although this is a can lead to a different topic, stay away from riba from interest and usury because that war ages war with Allah and his messenger stay away from gambling from cheating from selling things which are haram and prohibited from lottery tickets to alcohol to drugs and the likes of these matters Stay away from those things so that Allah may bless us. Have taqwa of Allah. Fear Him and keep your duty to Him. We have come to the time that our Prophet ﷺ, he relayed in the hadith. I believe also in Sahih al-Bukhari. Where he said a time will come upon the people when one will not care how one gains their money legally or illegally. And I guarantee you that a big problem that we're facing, the big problems that we're facing in this world, a lot of them have to do with this fitna of mal, this fitna of, of wealth. Because that has become what we worship, what we strive for, what we chase. And it has definitely led us to do ourselves wrong, our families wrong, other people wrong. Allah said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu attaqullah wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghad wa attaqullah inna Allah khabirun bima ta'amaloon Allah says what means, O you who believe, fear Allah and keep your duty to Him and let every person look to what he has sent forth for tomorrow. And fear Allah, verily Allah is well acquainted with what you used to do. And again, the statement of Allah, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْهُ سَيِّئَاتِهِ وَيُعْذِمْ لَهُ أَجْرَ And Allah said what means, and whoever fears Allah and keeps his duty to him, Allah will expiate for him his sins. Allah will forgive him or her their sins and will enlarge their reward. وَقَالَ اللَّهُ وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهُ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرِجًا And whoever fears Allah, Allah will give him or her a way out of every difficulty. Remember this ayah, reflect upon it, especially in these hard times. Do not be tempted into sin or haram to earn your wealth or when you're finding yourself struggling in this situation. Allah will give you a way out if you fear Him and you put your trust in Him. No doubt. This virus is probably one of the biggest Trials we will see in our lifetime that will affect all of humanity. Constantly we see the earthquakes and the hurricanes and the likes of these disasters or devastations. But Allah told us that diseases will come that we've never seen before. When we slip and get to the point where fahasha, evil, wrongdoing, becomes the norm 
and it's done in public and we have no shame anymore. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, if I said anything good, it is from Allah. And everything evil that I might have said or wrong that I might have said is from myself and shaitan and I seek Allah's refuge from the accursed Satan and I ask Allah's forgiveness for it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik wa shahadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. We ask Allah Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min al-barasi wal-jununi wal-judhami wa min sayi' al-asqam. We ask Allah to protect us in this time from every disease, from plague, from madness. And we ask Allah to rectify ourselves and make us of those who seek forgiveness from Him and repent to Him daily, many times, not just once or twice. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.